Hi student, this is uh, Professor Harmony Kim. You studied four kinds of Nikaya so far, and there is one more Nikaya in Sutta Pitaka, that is Kutaka Nikaya. So you will study Kutaka Nikaya today. Kutaka Nikaya is one of the five Nikaya, and Kutaka Nikaya contains the largest number of treaties and the most numerous categories of Dharma. The word Kutaka means minor or small, literally. However, the actual content of this collection can by no means be regarded as minor. The miscellaneous nature of this collection contain not only discourses by the Buddha, but compilation of brief doctrinal notes, mostly in verse. And also, Kutaka Nikaya include account of personal struggles and achievement by teras and teris, also in verse. Also, Kutaka Nikaya include the birth story, the history of Buddha, all this content, broad scope of categories can be found from Kutaka Nikaya. Kutaka Nikaya is uh, composed of 18 treaties. And first one is Kutaka Pata, second Dhammapata, Udana, Itibuttaka, Sutanipata, Vimanabhatu, Petabhatu, Teragata, Terigata, Jataka story, Nidesa, Patisan Vidabhaga, Apadana, Buddhabhamsa, Kariya Pitaka, Neti, Petakopadesa, Milinda Pangha. So we will look at each book and then I might choose a couple of sutra from each treatise. The first of treaties in Kutaka Nikaya is Kutaka Pata Pali. Kutaka Pata Pali contains readings of minor passages. Most of the suttas are also found in other parts of the Tipitaka. It is a collection of nine short formula and suttas used as a manual for novice on the training and those are the first training is the three refuse refuse to the buddha refuse to the dhamma and refuse to the sangha second training is the ten precept the third 32 parts of the body the fourth Simple Dhamma for novice in the form of catechism. Also, Kutaka Pata Pali include sutra such as Mangala Sutra, Ratana Sutra, Tilokuta Sutta, Nidikanda Sutta, and Mera Sutta. Let's look at the first, the three refugees. The three refugees is taking refuge in the three gem, the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. By reciting the form formula, I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dhamma, I take refuge in the Sangha. This reciting is a conscious act of expression of a complete faith in the three gem, not merely profession of a superficial belief nor a right of traditional piety. This recite implies, first, one's humility, second, acceptance of triple gems as one's guiding principles and ideas, third, acceptance of discipleship, and the last one, homage. In the section on Kumara Panha, uh, there are Q&A. Question and answer for young boys. And those questions is uh, regarding the Dharma, which is tailored to suit the young intellect of novices. For example, 
What is the one? The nutriment which sustains the life of beings. What are the two? Nama and Rupa. Do you remember five kanda can be categorized into two? One is Nama, the other one is Rupa. What are the three? Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, Vedana. Vedana means feeling. There are three kinds of feeling, pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. What are the four? The four noble truths. What are the five? The five groups of grasping. What are the six? The six bases of sense. What are the seven? The seven factors of enlightenment. Seven factors of enlightenment are mindfulness, keen investigation of the Dhamma, energy, happiness, calm, concentration, and equanimity. When you study meditation, you probably hear about seven factors of enlightenment. What are the eight? The noble path of eight constituent. What are the nine? The nine types of beings. What are the ten? The ten the meritorious course of action. The young novice take this Dhamma as a source for their practice. Maha Mangala Sutta is famous for the great blessings. So it is highly cherished in all Buddhist countries. It is composed in elegant verses and a comprehensive summary of Buddhist ethics for the individual as well as for society. There are 38 blessings enumerated in this sutta. Providing guidance of one's life starts with advice on avoidance of bad company and provide ideas and practice basic to all moral and spiritual progress. Also, the sutra provides ideas for the welfare and happiness of the individual, the family, and the community. The final blessing is on the development of the mind which is not organized by accidental fortune. Sometimes people want to gain for free. Try to not develop your mind to stick to some accidental fortune or undeserved fortune or unaffected by sorrow. Also develop a mind which can make defilement clean Therefore, all these development of mind can lead to gain liberation. One of the sutta belong to Kutakapata Pali is Ratana Sutta. Ratana means precious jewel. When the Ratana Sutta was expound, at the time the Buddha stayed in Rajagaha. The prince whose name is Rikavi in Vasali kingdom, request the Buddha come to his kingdom. Therefore, the Buddha had been requested by the Rikavi prince to come from Rajagaha to Vesali because the city of Vesali was in high death toll. The background of Ratana Sutta is the city of Vesali was afflicted by a famine causing death especially to the poor folk. Due to the presence of a decaying corpse, the evil spirit began to haunt the city, this followed by a pestilence. Plagued by these three fears of famine, non-human beings, and pestilence, the citizens seek the help of the Buddha who was living at Lazagaha. The Sutta, the Ratana Sutta, was delivered for the purpose of countering the plague by invocation of the truth of the special qualities of the three gems, such as the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. And I upload Ratana Sutta from external link, so we will listen for a while. Samagatani, Umani Bayani, 
Sampai jumpa 
Okay. The next sutta is Metta Sutta. You already familiar with this Mera Sutta because when we study Anguttara Nikaya, I already introduced that. So just to briefly review is Metta Sutta was spoken by the Buddha himself, and one of the scripture exemplifying the Buddhist meditation when. Bhikkhus had been harassed by deities on the slope of the Himalaya with noises and stenches. The Buddha uttered the hymn of universal love as a meditation subject for the purpose of providing a safeguard for those bhikkhus. Okay. So this time, we will see uh, the detailed procedure of Metta Sutta in terms of how this Metta Sutta modify our cognitive process. Our mind can be transformed from something dislike to kindness. Okay, so Kanaria Metta Sutta, the content of Metta Sutta is this is why it should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and who knows the path of peace. Let them be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech, humble and not conceited, contented and easily satisfied, unburdened with duties and frugal in their ways peaceful and calm and wise and skillful, not proud or demanding in nature. Let them not do the slightest thing that the wise would later reprove. In gladness and in safety, may all beings be at ease. Whatever living beings there may be, whether they are weak or strong, omitting none, the great or the mighty, medium, short or small, the seen or unseen, those living near and far away, those born and to be born, may all beings be at ease. So let's do, think about once you're chanting this Mara Sutta, therefore your mind full with May I be well, happy, peaceful, and prosperous. May no harm come to me. May no difficulties come to me. May no problems come to me. May I always meet with success. May I also have a patience, courage, understanding, and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems, and failure in life. Once your mind is full with this cognitive scheme, then you will change meditation subject from yourself to your favorable people. For example, parents, family, and relatives. You think of them and then think like this. May my parents be well, happy, peaceful, and prosperous. And then you continue to chanting. 
And once your mind is full with the blessing for your parents and move to your family and relatives, may my relatives be well, happy, peaceful, and prosperous. Now, once your mind is already fulfilled with this blessing to your favorable people, then your meditation subject move to neutral people, for example, teachers or your friends. Okay, so maybe you can think of me and then, okay, may Professor Kim be well, happy, peaceful, and prosperous. And or maybe you can put your friends, your may my friends be well, happy, peaceful, and prosperous. And then you think all these, you know, blessings, same level of blessings to your neutral people. Now, once your mind, the more and more chanting, and then your mind is more flexible, and then more room to embrace people you dislike, you know, ordinary time. So now you will change and think about meditation subject to your hostile people. So you think about enemy or unfriendly person. So my enemies may be well, happy, peaceful, and prosperous. And once you pass through all these sequence, then the last part is may all beings, not only human being, maybe in the air there's a bacteria and then some animals, and some your dog or cats, all living beings, all beings everywhere be well and happy, peaceful and prosperous. This is the detailed sequence of how you engage in Mera Sutta. Okay, so once again, um, you have to start from yourself and then move to meditation subject to your favorable person and next neutral, then next is hostile and then next is all beings. You never ever choose someone who already dead. So projecting matter, loving kindness extend from myself, then revealed subject, then neutral, then hatred subject to the neighbor, the country, even further to all continent. Extending matter from human to all sentient being. The pigus practice meta meditation permeating the whole atmosphere with their thought of loving kindness. And you might remember that there is uh, 11 kinds of advantage once you practice meta meditation. And these are, uh, I enumerate what kind of benefit the practitioner can get from meta meditation. Move to the next is Kutakapata Pali is a collection of a sutra to be arranged in a way that how to form a continuous theme demonstrating the practice of the holy life. And this sutra was arranged how a person accepts the Buddha's teaching by taking refuge in the three gems. Then how he observed the ten precepts for moral purification. The Buddha takes up a meditation subject, such as the contemplation of 32 constituents of the body to develop non-attachment. 32 constituents of the body, for example, is hair of the head, hair of the body, nails, teeth, skin, muscle, tendon, bones, bone marrow, spleen, heart, liver, Membranes, kidneys, lungs, large intestine, small intestine, feces, gall, flame, lymph, blood, sweat, fat, tears, oil, saliva, mucus, oil in the joint, urine, and brain. These are the 32 constituents of the body. So if you type 
Uttakapata Pali, you will find the 32 component of the body as a meditation subject. The Buddha has shown the virtues and merits of giving and how one handicaps oneself by not performing act of merit. So we continuously cultivate the act of merit. In the meanwhile, anyone safeguards himself by reciting the Mangala Sutta and provides protection to others by reciting the Ratana Sutta. Finally, anyone can develop loving kindness toward all beings, thereby keeping himself safe from harm. At the same time, anyone achieves jhani concentration, which will eventually lead him to reach the goal of a spiritual life, such as nirvana. The second treatise of Kutaka Nikaya is Dhammapada, very famous. The Dhammapada is a collection of the Buddha's words or basic essential principles of the Buddha's teaching. It consists of 423 verses arranged according to topics in 26 bhagas or 26 chapters. One can get much encouragement from the Dhammapada, not only for spiritual development, but also for everyday living. The first verse in Dhammapada is, mind is forerunner of everything. In verses of 277 until 279, the Dhammapada stated that all conditioned things are subject to suffering and that all things are insubstantial, incapable of being called one's own. What are those? So, dukkha, anicca, and anatta. When one sees the real nature of things with vipassana insight, one becomes disillusioned with the charm and attraction of the five aggregates. Such disillusionment constitutes the path of purity. So the Dhammapada recommends a life of peace and non-violence and points out the eternal law that hatred does not cease by hatred. Dhammapada advised to conquer anger by loving kindness, evil by good, miserliness by generosity, and false food by truth. The Dhammapada serve as a digest of essential principles and features of the Buddha Dhamma, and the Dhammapada serves wisdom for all stages of age. Udana is the third book of the Kutaka Nikaya. Udana means solemn utterance spontaneously evoked by the understanding of the significance of the event. The Udana is a collection of 80 joyful utterance made by the Buddha on unique occasion of bliss. For seven days after the Buddha's enlightenment, the Buddha sat at the foot of the Bodhi tree, feeling the bliss of liberation. In the first watch of the night, when the principles of the origin of the whole mass of suffering was thoroughly grasped in a detailed manner, the Buddha uttered the first stanza of joy in a way that, when things become manifest to the Ardent meditating Brahmin, all his doubts then vanish since he understands each thing along with its cause. In the second watch of the night, his mind was occupied with the principle of dependent origination in the order of seizing. So how this dependent origination can be seized? When the manner of cessation of suffering was thoroughly understood, the Buddha was moved again to utter the second stanza of jubilation. That was, when things become manifest 
to the ardent meditating Brahmin, all his doubts then vanish since he has known the utter destruction of conditions. In the third watch of the night, the Buddha went over the detailed formula of the principle of dependent origination in both the orders of arising and ceasing. Then, having mastered the doctrine of dependent origination very thoroughly, the Buddha uttered the third stanza of a solemn utterance. That was when things become manifest to the ardent meditating Brahmin, he abides scattering Mara's host like the sun illuminating the sky. Itiputaka Pali Itiputaka is the fourth book of Kutaka Nikaya. Itiputaka contains 112 suttas divided into four nipatas, four sections, with verses and prose mixed in a way of supplementing each other. According to the commentarial tradition, the suttas of the Itiputaka were collected by the lay woman disciple, whose name is Kujutara. This lay woman listened to the sermon given by the Buddha while the Buddha was staying at Kosambi. This lay woman, Kujutara, was a servant of King Udana in Kosambi, and she used to go regularly to listen to the Buddha and then later repeated what she had heard to the other woman. The collection of these sayings become the Itibhutaka. Each passage of Itibhutaka starts with a phrase, Thus was said by the Buddha, and reads like a personal notebook in which short sayings of the Buddha are recorded. The Itivataka is the only book in the Pali Canyon that introduces and concludes its suttas in this fashion, such as it always starts with, thus was said by the Buddha. It's a little bit different. Thus have I heard. The rest of Nikaya starts with, thus have I heard. But in Itivataka, it starts with, thus was said by the Buddha. The layman. Kujutara became a stream enterer after meeting the Buddha. The division into Nipatas denotes that the collection is classified in ascending numerical order of categories of the Dhamma. It's a similar way in the Nipata of the Anguttara Nikaya. So in Ekaga Nipata, passages are dealing with a single item of the Dhamma. For example, bhikkhu, abandon craving. I guarantee attainment to the stage of anagami if you abandon craving. Do you remember four stages of religious progress? First, sotapana, stream enterer, sokadagami, once returner, anagami, no returner, and arahan. So this lay woman, kujutara, become Sotapana, and when you read this Itibhutaka, the passage is saying that single item of the Dhamma, such as Pigu of Endon Craving, I guarantee attainment to the stage of Anagami if you abandon craving. So when we abandon craving, then you will reach no returner, Anagami. Next book is Sutanipata. It is similar to Dhammapada. Sutanipata is a work in verse with occasional introductions in prose. It divided into five bhagas. Uraga Bhaga, Chula Bhaga, Mahavaga, Ataka Bhaga, Parayana Bhaga. 
Parayana Vaga deals with the 16 questions asked by six Brahmin youth while the Buddha was staying at Pasanaka's shrine in the Magadha kingdom. The Buddha gave his answers to each of the questions asked by the youth. Knowing the meaning of each question and of the answers given by the Buddha, if one practices the Dhamma as instructed in this sutra, one can surely reach the other shore, which is free from aging and death. So this shore, this side, is full of aging and death. In this side, you have no way to escape from aging and death. But there is the other shore, the other side, which is free from aging and death. When you read this sutra and follow the practice, then this sutra facilitates you move from this shore to the other shore, the other shore, in which there is no aging and death. In the 12 sutra of the Uragavaga are found some important teachings of the Buddha which may be practiced in the course of one's daily life. What is that? Some important teaching of the Buddha in one's daily life. Okay. One of the sutra um, can be found in Uragavaga is Kagavisana Sutta. Kagavisana Sutta tells that true friends are rare to come by these days. A show of a friendship is very often hide some private ends. Man's mind is defiled by self-interest. So becoming disillusioned, roam alone like a rhinoceros. So this Kagavisana Sutta it has another name as Rhinoceros. So when you cannot be with a good company, you would rather be alone like a rhinoceros. So try to avoid a bad company. Even though you feel lonesome, you'd better behave like a rhinoceros. That is much better than just to get together with bad company. Another sutta is Vasala Sutta says, No by birth does one become an outcast. Not by birth does one become a Brahmana. By one's action, one becomes an outcast. By one's action, one becomes a Brahmana. So, Buddhist ethics is highly emphasized. The Metta Sutta comes again in Yuragavaga. As a mother, even with her life, protects her only child, so let one cultivate immeasurable loving kindness toward all living beings. The sixth book is Bhimana Bhattupali. Vimana means mansion. Here it refers to celestial mansion gained by beings who have done act of merit. 85 verses are grouped in seven vagas. In the first four vagas, celestial female give an account of what act of merit they have done in previous existence as a human being and how they are reborn in Deva realm where magnificent mansions await their appearance. In the last three beggars, the celestial male tell their stories. The Venerable Maha Mokalana who can visit the Deva realm brings back these stories as he was told by the Deva. Mahamogalana recounted these stories to the Buddha and the Buddha confirms the stories by supplying more background details to them. 
These discourses are given with a view to bring out the fact that the human world offers plenty of opportunities for performing meritorious act. In other words, if the, diva, the beings staying in the diva is always in better position than human world, why they cannot be easily enlightened? But human world may be better position in terms of performing meritorious act and then the other objective for such discourses is to refute the wrong views of those who believe that nothing exists after this life and those who maintain that there is no resultant effect to any section. Five out of 85 stories concern those who have been reborn in Diva world having developed themselves to the stage of Sotapanna so tapana means stream enterer in their previous life. Two stories out of 85 stories regarding people who had expressed words of respect to the Buddha with clasped hands. So you put palm to palm and then respect to the Buddha then those people can born in Diva world. And one out of 85 stories is people who had expressed word of jubilation at the ceremony of building a monastery for the Sangha. So maybe somebody who contribute a Buddhist monastery for the Sangha, then that person can born in Diva world. The vivid account of the lives of the divas in various diva abode serve to show clearly that the higher beings are not immortal, not creators, but they are also evolved. So higher beings who stay in diva world, they also become mortal. They also, their position is not fixed forever. They also evolved. This evolution is conditioned by the result of their previous meritorious deed. Those meritorious actions are subject to the law of Anicca, Dukkha, and Anatta and have to strive themselves to achieve the deathless state of Nirvana. So there's a still limit in Diva world and they also had to go over mortality and they also evolve. The seventh book of Kutaka Nikaya is Pita Vatu Pali. Pita means departed speed or ghost. The stories of Peter's are account of the miserable state of beings who have been reborn in unhappy existence as a consequence of their evil deed. There are 51 stories divided into four bhagas, and four bhagas describe the life of misery of the evil doer and this is a direct contrast to the magnificent life of the divas. From Pitava to Pali, emphasis is laid on the beneficial effect of giving, whereas envy, jealousy, miserliness, greed, and wrong views are shown to be the cause for appearance in the unhappy state of Peter's. The main suffering in this state is lack of food, so feel hungry all the time, and lack of clothing, and also dwelling for the condemned beings. A certain and immediate release from such miseries can be given to the unfortunate being if his former relatives perform 
meritorious deeds and share the merit with him. In Tirokuta Pita Vatu, a detailed account is given on how King Bimbisara brings relief to his former relatives who are unfortunately suffering as Pitas. King Bimbisara makes generous offer of food, clothing, and also King Bimbisara provides dwelling places to the Buddha and his disciples in terms of sharing the merit. And those meritorious acts are accrued to the peers who have been his friends and relatives in previous life. In Asia, some family offer the great food to the dead ancestor by way of a ritual. So parents or ancestors were already dead, but they think that they might not stay in pleasant realm. So in order to get out of that unpleasant realm, such as pitas, then they provide gorgeous food by way of a ritual so that that can be regarded as meritorious act. These meritorious act can help relatives or family who stay in Peter's out of get out of that Peter's and then stay in better realm. The eighth book is Teragata Pali. The Taragata is a compilation of delightful verses uttered by 264 teras. Teras means monk. These inspiring verses uttered from the heart of bhikkhus after their attainment of arhanship. The verses of Theragata Pali introduce how uh, trivial circumstances can become the start starting point of spiritual effort, which culminated in supreme liberation. Their struggle in converting from the home life to homeless recluse has been hard because of the inner fight between the forces of good and evil. In other words, once ordained and practiced and then following re religious path might not be easy because there is an inner fight between the forces of good and evil. But the bhikkhus have had a good fight and they have won and be freed from the greed, hatred, and ignorance. As a result, they utter those inspiring verses proclaiming their freedom and victory. In this verse, the Pigu has now his abode of five khandas well protected by the roofing and walls of sense restraint and panya. So he lives thus comfortably well shielded from the rain and storm of lust, craving, and attachment. As like being undisturbed by the pouring rain, he remains calm and composed, unpolluted from ignorance, hatred, and conceit. And he keeps alert and mindful to cope with any emergency that may arise through lack of mindfulness. So once Pigu overcome from bond of greed, hatred, and ignorance, then the Pigu uttered like this, Rain God, my abode has a roofing now for my comfortable living. It will shield me from the onset of wind and storm. Rain God, pour down to your heart content. My mind is calm and unshakable, free from fetters. I dwell striving strenuously with untiring zeal. Rain God, pour down to your heart content. 
This is、uh, one translation, and then the other version of a translation is very short. It says, My heart is roofed, comfortable, free from draft. My mind, well centered, release. I remain ardent. So, rain diva, go ahead and rain. So, rain is a kind of analogy. And then this rain may represent hatred, greed, and ignorance. But this kind of poison cannot penetrate to people because their mind is well e- equipped with the meditation practice. The next book is Tariata Pali. Tariata is a compilation of verses uttered by 73 Taris. Here the Tari is Pikuni, nun. Although the verses in the Tariata lack the poetic excellence and expression of love of solitude that characterize the verses in the Tariata. So, Tarigata, when you read that, you might read some verse uttered by Pigu and then the Bigu practice in solitude in the forest. And then, then the Bigu express solitude life in a poetic expression. But in Tarigata, you might not find that kind of expression. But Tarigata reflects the great piety and Resolution with which the Taris have struggled to reach the goal. One distinguishing feature of the struggle of the Tari is that many of them receive the final impetus to seek comfort in holy life through emotional imbalance they have been subject to. For example, in case of Kisakutami Sutta, Kisakutami lost her beloved son, so she was intensely suffered. But eventually, Kisakutami s e e k solace. If we read some portion of Kisakutami Sutta this way, because of her son's death, sorrow to the point of madness arose in her. She took the dead corpse, dead corpse means her son's dead body, on her hip and wandered in the city and asked the people in the city, Give medicine to me for my son. And this news entered the Buddha. The Buddha said to Kisakotami, Go having entered the city into whatever house has never before experienced any death, and take from them a mustard seed. So, Kisakotami, okay, if she can find some household which did not have any death, then she t h i n k that her son might be come back to life. But she v i s i t house by house, but there is no house in which there was no experience of death. So Gotami realized impermanence.、Okay? So death occurred to everyone. So Gotami covered her son in the ground. Gotami gave homage to the Buddha and joined the community of a nun. And she practiced, and her insight grows, and she became an Arahant. So, this sutta implies that Theragata and Terigata s h o w s examples of how to lead a human to the path of the holy life. The next book is Jataka Pali. We Easily called Jataka story. These are the stories of a previous existence of Gautama Buddha while he was as yet but a Bodhisattva. The Jataka is an extensive work in verses containing 547 stories 
as recounted by the Buddha. In Burmese version, it is 550 stories. In these verse stories are embedded moral principles and practices which the Bodhisattva had observed for self-development and perfection to attain Buddhahood. The 11th book is Nidesa Pali. Nidesa consists of two parts. One is Maha Nidesa, which is the major exposition that include commentary on the fourth Vaga of the Sutta Nipata. The other part is Chula Nidesa, the minor exposition, which is the commentary on the fifth Vaga, Parayana, and on the Kagavisana Sutta in the Sutta Nipata. Do you remember? Kagavisana Sutta is Rhinoceros Sutta. You go alone if you cannot find a good company. So that commentary of Rhinoceros Sutta can be found in Nidesa. This work can be attributed to the Venerable Sariputta, and this work contains much material on the Abhidhamma and constitute the earliest form of commentaries. And this fact provides evidence of a commentarial tradition many centuries before the Venerable Buddha Gosa appeared on the scene. The Venerable Buddha Gosa made the book named Bistimaga, Path of Purification, though that is a very famous commentary. But before Bistimaga, written by Buddha Gosa, there were commentary attributed to Sariputta and that word can be found from Nidesa. The twelfth book is Patisambhida Maga Pali. These discourses are entitled The Path of Analysis. It is attributed to the Venerable Sariputta, dealing with the salient teachings of the Buddha analytically in the style of the Abhidhamma. It is divided into three main bhagas, namely Mahabhaga, Yuganada Bhaga, and Panya Bhaga. Each bhaga consists of tens of groups named katas, such as Nana Kata, Diti Kata, etc. The treatment of each subject matter is very detailed and provides a theoretical foundation for the practice of path. The thirteenth book is Apadana Pali. It is a biographical work containing the life story of the Buddha and his Arahan disciples. Theragata and Terigata also include the story from disciples, Piku and Piguni. Well the Terigata and Theragata depict generally the triumphant moment of achievement of the Teras and Teris. The Apadana describes the uphill work they have to undertake to reach the summit of their ambition. So it describes more progress to reach the summit of their ambition. The Gathas and Apadanas supplement one another to unfold the inspiring tales of hard struggles and final conquest. The 14th book is Buddhavamsa. Buddhavamsa Pali gives a short historical account of Gautama Buddha and the 24 previous Buddhas who had practices his attainment of Buddhahood. It consists of 29 sections in verse. In the first section, Venerable Sariputta asks the Buddha what paramis he has fulfilled to achieve his goal of perfect enlightenment. 
Paramis means virtues toward perfection. So virtues need to be cultivated to reach perfection. So Sariputta asks about what kind of virtues need to practice to reach the perfect enlightenment. In the second section, the Buddha describes how he became inspired by Dipankara Buddha. So at the time, Buddha was a hermit. His name was Sumedha. So uh, Buddha was not enlightened. He was just a hermit. And then his name is Sumedha. So that is previous life. So, and at the time, there was a Buddha whose name is Dipankara. And this hermit, Sumedha, was highly impressed by Dipankara Buddha. And how the Buddha, Dipankara, gave the hermit Sumedha his blessings and foretelling that Sumedha would become a Buddha by the name of Gotama after a very, very long time later. So from then onward, the Bodhisattva Sumedha keeps on practicing the Ten Paramis. These Ten Paramis are highly emphasized in Mahayana Buddhism. So before Buddha was a uh, born in Prince, Siddhartha Prince, before that, in the previous life, Buddha was just a hermit. We call that Bodhisattva. And his name was Sumedha. When he was a Bodhisattva, at the time there was Dipankara Buddha. This Bodhisattva Sumedha was highly inspired by Dipankara Buddha. And also, Dipankara Buddha predict this hermit Sumedha will become Buddha in the future, as long as Bodhisattva Sumedha practice and cultivate the ten paramis. And what are those ten paramis? First, almsgiving, morality, renunciation, wisdom, perseverance, forbearance, truthfulness, determination, loving kindness, equanimity. In Buddha Bamsa Pali, there are 28 sections in which the names of three Buddhas are given, namely Tanankara Buddha, Medankara Buddha, Saranankara Buddha. They lived before Dipankara Buddha at different intervals of the world cycle. The name of other Buddha up to Godama Buddha are also enumerated together with the name of the Kappa. Kappa means time period in which they have appeared. Finally, there is a prediction by the Buddha that Metiya Buddha would arise after him in this world. The last section gives an account of how the Buddha's relics are distributed and where they are preserved. So, Tanankara Buddha, Medankara Buddha, Saranankara Buddha, they are Buddha exist in the past even before Gotama Siddhartha, even before Dipankara Buddha. Now, we need Buddha in the future, and they predict that there will be Buddha in the future, and the name of that Buddha is Metiya, Metiya Buddha. And that information can be found in Buddha Bamsa Pali. The 15th book is Kariya Pitaka. This discourse contains 35 stories of the Buddha's previous lives retold at the request of Venerable Sariputta. In other words, Venerable Sariputta asked about Buddha's past life again. 
So the Jataka story is concerned with the Buddha's previous existence from the time of Sumedha, the, the hermit, until he becomes Gautama Buddha. Compared to Jataka, Karya Pitaka deals with 35 of the existence of a Bodhisattva in this last world cycle. So this Siddhartha Gautama actually has a life cycle okay, as a Bodhisattva, as a Buddha. In case of a Buddha, just one cycle for Buddha, but before fully enlightened Buddha, then he was several lives as a Bodhisattva. And Karya Pitaka deals only 35 of the existence of the Bodhisattva in this last world cycle. Why the Venerable Sariputta ask about this question again? What was intention to bring about this question again? The Venerable Sariputta's intention in making this request is to bring out indomitable will, the supreme effort, the peerless sacrifice with which the Bodhisattva conducted himself in fulfillment of the Ten Paramis. So Sariputta wanna emphasize and the readers recognize that what kind of merit necessarily require to reach perfect liberation. The Bodhisattva has fulfilled the ten paramis for countless numbers of times. Karya Pitaka record such performance in 55 existences. Okay. Select seven out of the ten paramis and recount how each parami is accomplished in each of these existences. Ten stories in the first bhaga are concerned with accumulation of virtues in almsgiving. And the second bhaga mentions 15 stories. And five out of 15 stories deal with renunciation. One out of 15 stories deal with form determination. Six out of 15 stories deal with truthfulness. Two out of 15 stories deal with loving kindness. And one out of 15 stories deal with equanimity. So the discourse of Karya Pitaka more focus on 10 parameters or 10 paramis. The discourse of 16 are made up of 7 chapters and discourse of 17, Patakopadesa, are made up of 8 chapters. They are short and include a formula for taking refuse, the 10 precepts, and the metta. The last book of Kutaka Nikaya is Milinda Pana Pali. It records the questions asked by King Melinda and the answers given by the Venerable Nagasena five years after the Parinirvana of the Buddha. So the Buddha passed away and 500 years passed. At the time, there was a King Melinda converse with Venerable Nagasena. King Melinda was a Bacturian ruler of Sagala. He was very learned and highly skilled in the art of debating. The Venerable Nagasena, a fully accomplished Arahan, was on a visit to Sagala at the request of the Sangha. King Melinda, who wanted to have some point on the Dhamma clarified, asked the Venerable Nagasena of truth questions concerning the nature of man, his survival after death, and other doctrinal aspects of the Dhamma. The Venerable Nagasena gave him satisfactory replies on each question asked. 
These erudite questions and answers on the teachings of the Buddha are compiled into the book known as the Milinda Panha. Okay, this is all for Kutaka Nikaya. So you will solve the question and then you can find the answer from the previous slide. Okay, and then um, you just write down what uh, feature of the following star was recited to eliminate the plague. Okay, and you watch the video. Next one, you just write down true or false. Born in the diva world means immortal. Is it true or false? Yeah, I explain this. And in the Buddha Bamsa Pali, the Buddha had a previous existence as Bodhisattva. What was his name as the hermit? What was his name as the Bodhisattva? Also, I mentioned that. Last question. What is the opening statement? Itivataka Pali in Kudaka Nikaya. Most suttas start with, thus have I heard, but Itivataka Pali has a different opening statement. What is there? You just write down the phrase. Okay. So once you complete the question, you submit, and that activity will be counted as your attendance. Okay. So it's the same format. You include week number, week seven, and your name, and then send that assignment to my email account. And then the due is next Monday. This is the format of your assignment answer. I'm looking forward to receiving this assignment until 8th of June. Okay, see you next Monday. Bye now.